Hello and welcome uh, for this uh, new video, the uh, third I will post on my channel. And this time I will present to you another object from my collection, which is um, Spiked Helmet model 1915. Uh, so the Spiked Helmet model 1915, uh, which is this one, is actually a little, I mean, it's has a lot in common uh, with uh, the model 1895, but as you can see, uh, all uh, the metal parts are actually in a different metal. It used to be in brass, you can see in the model 1895, and now it is made of some kind of cheap metal uh, that has been uh, treated uh, to give it this uh, grayish color to prevent corrosion. So why the change in metal? Simply because of the tower restriction, uh, brass was simply needed for other stuff such as shell or you know, artillery shells, and therefore it was, uh, I mean, it was a better use to use brass for shells than for helmet. So that's, I, as far as I understand, the main reason. If you have some other reason, please put them in the, in the comments uh, below. Um, but yes, what, uh, I mean, another uh, change uh, between the model 1895 and the model 1915 is the, the spike. The spike is now removable. So on all model 1915, you can actually remove the spike, if so you wish. Let me just put it back now, and uh, and that's about it in terms of changes. So the metal part, not the same metal, the spike, you can remove it. With regard to the shin strap, it's just the same thing. You can see uh, in terms of, uh, of time, the time has not been as keen on with this helmet than on the previous one. It's kind of uh, well, not, a, not such a great condition. Uh, yes, and here you have uh, the, uh, I mean, that is the Reich Cocard, or what's left of the Reich Cocard. Uh, yes, well, actually, no, well, Prussian Reich Cocard, you cannot see anyway what's, uh, what kind of Cocard it was. Something maybe to notice that can be interesting uh, with this uh, helmet is, as you can see here, there is a difference in terms of color uh, between uh, the metallic part and uh, the, um, uh, the, um, the, I mean, the leather part. It's simply because with age, these helmets, not just the model 1915, but all the spiked helmets tend to shrink a little bit, depending on the condition in which they were stored. Uh, sometimes, it, I mean, often it will happen that you will find some helmet uh, which your leather has shrunk a bit. And this is typically what happened here. So all this kind of uh, brownish uh, part you can see on the leather here was actually inside the metal band. Uh, and because it shrinked a little bit, slowly uh, get pulled outside of the metal band. So that's something you uh, tend to see on all the pickle hole. You can also see here uh, the varnish that is kind of uh, leaving the helmet. So here is really the leather, and here you can see like a clear limit between what's left of the varnish and the leather. Uh, hopefully it's only on this part of the helmet that the varnish is, is, uh, is left. Uh, on the rest of the helmet, the varnish is still uh, present. Uh, varnish or lacquer, I don't know exactly what to call it in English. Uh, yes, you can see that all metallic parts are not all metallic parts are now part, uh, made of this uh, new uh, new metal, uh, cheaper metal. And you can see like uh, the anti-corrosion uh, uh, treatment it received mm, worked more or less because you can see some corrosion here, for instance, uh, on uh, the the shin strap. Uh, yes, so now with regard to this very particular helmet, uh, I mean they are the same construction. Uh, only this one again is in, not in such as good condition as the other one. Uh, you can also see, as in the previous helmets, uh, some stems. So on this stamp, you can see it a little better. Normally, I guess it's on the wrong side, so I will try to show it better. Oh, you can see it a little better. So basically, I will save you some time. It's written FR38, so Fusilier Regiment number 38. Uh, it is uh, a regiment that uh, fought uh, in France and I believe also a little bit on the Eastern Front. Uh, with regard to uh, research, because I discussed it already last time, there is this great website, it's a German website called GenWiki, wikigenealogy.net, which actually gives you a lot of uh, information about all uh, German regiments, uh, where they fought, and also information such as uh, where they are from. So for instance, the uh, Fusilier Regiment number 38, uh, Graf von Molke, because every regiment uh, has a, a little name. So this number 38 from uh, Platz, and uh, its, uh, its name is the von Molke Regiment, a uh, von Molke Regiment. So you will find all this information on front this website, uh, Genwick. So that's about it uh, for today's video. Uh, nothing more to say uh, about the summit, apart maybe that the summit uh, were uh, so released on 
started to be ma made in 1915, and actually there are still some uh, German soldiers who were in them in 1918. But you have to understand that it took time <laughs> to make, uh, but I think there were millions and millions of uh, uh, Stahlhelms or steel helmets, and therefore a spiked helmet. Uh, where I'll continue, I mean, you continue to see steel helmet until the end of the war, especially for uh, reservists as well as the second grade or third grade troops, uh, often still kept their uh, spiked helmet until the end of the war. So, thank you very much, and uh, see you next week for a new video. Bye!